Hello there and welcome back to Interviews with a Geology Student. I'm Alexandra Avila, a Geology Student from Harvard University. Some truly revolutionary scientific theories may take years to take acceptance among other scientists. This is true about plate tectonics, one of the most important and far-ranging geological theories of all time. When first supposed, people thought it was ridiculous but steadily accumulating evidence finally prompted its acceptance. With immense consequences for geology, geophysics, oceanography, and paleontology. And the man who first proposed this theory was a brilliant in disciplinary scientist, Alfred Wegener. Today we have the pleasure to interview Dr. Wegener. Dr. Wagner, when did you start to be interested in this scientific world? I have always been interested in geophysics and also became fascinated with the developing fields of meteorology and climatology. During my life, I made several key contributions to meteorology. I pioneered the use of balloons to track air circulation, and I wrote a textbook that became a standard through Germany. In 1906, I joined the expeditions to Greenland to study polar air circulation. In the autumn of 1911, I was browsing the university library when I found a scientific paper that lists fossils of identical plants and animals found on opposite sides of Atlantic. Intrigued by this information, I found more cases of similar organisms separated by great oceans. I noticed the close fit between the coastlines of Africa and South America. My dissimilarity among organisms be due not to be land bridges, but to the continents having been joined together at one time. Could you talk to us about your theory and what it consists about? Sure. Well, in 1910, I became curious about why some continents look as though they could fit together. The continents of Earth had moved. My hypothesis was that all the continents were once joined together in a single landmass and have since drifted apart. So then your idea that continents slowly moved together over Earth's surface became known as continental drift. That's correct, Alexandra. The continents were joined together in a supercontinent or a single landmass about 300 years ago. I call this supercontinent Pangaea. Over 10 million years, Pangaea began to break apart. The pieces of Pangaea slowly moved to their present locations. These pieces became the continents that are formed today. You can see this information in my book called The Origin of Continents of the Ocean. Dr. Wegener, what could you say to all scientists out there? Well, scientists still do not appear to understand sufficiently that all Earth science must contribute evidence toward unveiling the state of our planet in the earlier times, and that the truth of matter can only be reached by combining all this evidence. It is only by combining the information furnished by all Earth science that we can hope to determine the truth. That is to say, to find the picture that sets out all of these known facts in the bed arrangement and therefore has the highest degree of probability. Further, we can be prepared always for the possibility that each known discovery, no matter what science finishes, may modify the conclusions we draw. Thank you, Dr. Wagner. It was a pleasure speaking to you could feel more solid than the ground under our feet. Yet, the surface of our earth is not fixed, but rather broken up like a jigsaw puzzle into enormous plates that move. This process is called plate tectonics, and it's transformed the thinking of geologists. One of them, Henry Hess, was an instrumental figure in figuring out how plate tectonics work. Professor Hess is here with us. Professor Hess, you possess two valuable skills, careful attention to detail and the ability to form hypotheses. Could you talk us about your work? Well, I have studied mineralogy at Yale, 
and I was teaching geology when World War II was declared. I was called to active duty after Pearl Harbor. While cruising um, from one bottle to the next, I kept the transfer sounding gear, which bounded sound waves of the sea floor in order to determine out the underwater relief or topography, running day and night. This led permit me to discovery of a flat top mountain that I named Guajas in honor of the Swiss founder of the principal geology department. It also produced thousands of miles of echo sounding surveys of the ocean floor. Within a few years, a curious terrain had emerged. Vast flat plains interrupted by ridges or most precisely, vast mountain ranges. Professor Hess, what is your theory after all your work? I propose a groundbreaking hypothesis that proved vitally important development of plate tectonics theory. It addressed several geologic puzzles. If the oceans have existed if for at least 4 billion years, why has so little sediment accumulated on the ocean floor? Why are fossils found in sediments no more than a 180 million years old? And how does the continents move? I theorize that the ocean floor is at mostly one only a few hundred million years old, significantly younger than the continents. This is how long it takes for molten rock to use to ooze up from a volcanic active mid-ocean ridges. It spreads south waves to create new seafloor and disappear back into Earth's deep interior at the ocean trenches. How did your theory support Wagner's theory? The theory explains how the once joined continents have separated into the seven that exist today. The continents don't change dramatically or move independently, but are transported by the shifting tectonic plate on which they rest. You can find all my work in the book called History of the Ocean's Basins, formally published in 1962, and for some time was the single most referenced work in solid air geophysics. Dr. Wagner and Professor Hess, your contributions to the scientific world have been very helpful. Very thankful for your time.